Hey guys, what's up? I'm back with another video today, and today I'm doing my Chicago Bears mock draft. So as always, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Help me reach 150 subscribers before the end of the month of April. Um, by doing that, I we are almost at the uh, NFL draft. I'll be doing live coverage on Thursday and maybe Saturday. Uh, so make sure that you are subscribed for all that content. Like this video if you enjoy it. Comment all your thoughts and opinions down below. And let's get started with today's video. So as you guys know, and uh, as you guys probably have watched, uh, I have a bunch of Chicago Bears mock drafts out. Um, this is my second to last one. I hope to put out one more uh, next week before the uh, final draft. But um, let's get started with today's video and let's get into it. Um, at the number 20 overall pick, I have the Bears selecting Tevin Jenkins, offensive tackle out of Oklahoma State University. Um, so I think that Tevin Jenkins really fits well. Um, and um, the reason why Tevin Jenkins fits so well is because uh, going from right to left, uh, you then would have Tevin Jenkins, um, probably James Daniels. You, I'm not for sure you could switch the two guards, but still. Then Sam Mustafer, um, then Charles uh, Cody Whitehair, and then um, Charles Leno. So I think with that offensive line, that offensive line is a lot better than putting Jermaine Ifedi in there uh, because I think Tevin Jenkins is a lot better of a player than Jermaine Ifedi. And plus, he especially helps in the run blocking category. He is a violent and ferocious run blocker, and that's really where his expertise and his uh, main value comes in is in the run blocking area. As long as he's able to uh, be a great run blocker, um, that's something that the Bears didn't have at right tackle, whether it was Jason Spriggs, Alex Bars, uh, Jermaine Ifedi, Rashad Coward, like whoever it was last year. They didn't have a really good run blocking ta right tackle. And the other thing is I think there's still a need at right tackle rather than at left tackle because even though it's nice to be able to cut Charles Leno, you already cut Bobby Massey and Tevin Jenkins was a right tackle for four years. So I think that really fits a hole and fills a need. Um, the other players that were available was a C. O. G. R. E. A. Uh, defensive end out of Georgia, Rashad Bateman, wide receiver out of Minnesota, Najee Harris, running back out of Alabama, Creed Humphrey, center out of Oklahoma, Trevor Morig, safety out, or Trayvon Morig, safety out of TCU. Um, so those were the other players that were available. The only one I kind of debated on was Rashad Bateman, but I think offensive tackle is so much bigger of a need than, um, than the wide receiver position, especially when you did keep Allen Robinson. The other thing that I will say before I continue is there are no trades, or there's one trade in this draft. Um, I didn't want to do trades up, but when I saw the trade that I had, I wasn't going to do any trades. Um, but this trade was just too good to pass up. So um, At number 52, I have Ronnie Perkins, defensive end out of Oklahoma. So the one thing that I do want to point out here, if you don't know what a 3-4 set is rather than a 4-3, I'm going to quickly explain it. So a 3-4 set is, is three down linemen right here, and then you have four guys that are linebackers. Usually, those two guys, those two guys that are outside linebackers, so on the outside of the formation, are usually rushing the passer, or one of them is. So, that usually means that Khalil Mack being an outside linebacker usually means he's coming and rushing the passer. Same thing with Robert Quinn. Rob, uh, Ronnie Perkins uh, being a defensive end, it fits more in the Keem Hicks or Bilal Nichols role. Not the Eddie Goldman role, which he's the nose tackle, um, but the Keem Hicks, and Eddie, uh, uh, Keem Hicks and Bilal Nichols. So here's Eddie Goldman, and here's where Bilal Nichols and uh, Keem Hicks plays. And I really like Ronnie Perkins because when you put him in, that means that you are able to, um, if you do lose a Keem Hicks injury, injury, which is very likely at this point in his career, or if you want to cut him after next year, save a lot of cap, Ronnie Perkins is definitely the player to do that. He isn't that great of a, uh, he has some maybe character issues uh, because he served a, a suspension uh, for, I think, violating drug policies of Oklahoma with Ron J. Stevenson. So that does bother me a little bit. But at the same time, I think most of that uh, usually is churned out in the NFL, and uh, most people are able to fix that for the most part. So hopefully 
Uh, if the Bears draft and they're able to fix that, uh, make sure, keep them on that right path um, and stay out of the drugs. So other players that were available was Asante Samuel Jr., cornerback out of Florida State, Aleb McNeil, defensive tackle out of North Carolina State, Kadarius Toney, Florida, wide receiver out of Florida, and Liam Eikenberg, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. <coughs> Excuse me. The only other player that I considered here was Kadarius Toney. I thought he was a good pickup, but the problem with Kadarius Toney, he has that explosiveness, he has that it factor, which I really like. He he reminds me a lot of Darnell Mooney, but later on in this draft, you'll kind of see how much I like the later round wide receivers value-wise more than I like the later round defensive end values, um, especially when you're playing the th- uh three or four technique, uh, which is what uh, Keem Hicks and Ball and Nichols play. Um, it's based on the position uh, that you are playing, just so if you don't know that. Um, at pick one, oh, okay, so the Raiders traded with me. Uh, they got I got they got the 83rd pick. I got the 101st and 112th pick. The Raiders do not have these picks. They traded a bunch around to get these picks. Uh, so if you look at the draft order, they're like, Raiders don't have those picks. They traded for them. Um, but either way, at uh, number 101, I picked Demetrius Felton, wide receiver slash running back out of UCLA. Um, just just fantastic player. Like, this guy is just Tariq Cohen. He's just Tariq Cohen. And I love it. I, I Like, you cannot get enough of this. And what I really like to do here is kind of make him in to, and I know, I know that I'm going to get a lot of blowback here, but to make him in to a McKe- McCall Hardman to uh, Tariq Hill. So that comparison would be Darnell Mooney is Tariq Hill and make this guy like a McCole, Mikhail Hardman um, who's able to still run fast, isn't as well developed, but can also run the ball on jet sweeps, um, on pitches, on stuff like that. Has that running back ability because he was that in college, but at the same time has that wide receiver ability. And I just love that, especially coming from uh, Matt Nagy coming from Kansas City. I think that's really going to help him out, and I think that will help the Bears out in being able to expand the offensive playbook as Matt Nagy is entering to into his like his uh, maybe his last year, maybe not. Uh, we'll see with what happens there. Other players that were available was Drew Dahlman, uh, center out of Stanford, Kendrick Green, offensive guard out of Illinois, Dwayne Estridge, wide receiver out of Michigan, uh, Western Michigan. Sorry, uh, uh, Davis Mills, quarterback out of Stanford. So I know a lot of you guys are like, why haven't I picked a quarterback at this point? You really should have picked a quarterback. Well, in my opinion, and I know that this isn't going to probably happen, but Kellen Mond was ava- was probably going to be available and that he was available for the 112th pick. So I picked Kellen Mond with the 112th pick, quarterback out of Texas A&M. But I'm going to go back into explaining this. I like Kellen Mond's attributes, and in the fourth round, I like him a lot better than drafting Davis Mills, uh, just because I think Kellen Mond had first-round potential, but he just never lived up to it. So if you take him in the fourth round, it's just it, it's kind of a lottery pick. You're not taking him in the first round or the second round, where those picks have a lot of value, and if they bust, it's a lot bigger and a lot more consequential, uh, like Mitchell Trubisky. Um but I think when you do this, it gives a lot of trade value, uh, or not a lot of trade value, but even trade value, if he does kind of start to pan out and you decide to draft a quarterback next year, maybe you could trade him for a first or second round draft pick and flip him for a fourth round draft pick. And I think that's something that the Bears could do because I really like the quarterbacks coming out next year, whether it's uh, maybe a little bit less hype, Kedon Slovich. Uh, Desmond Ritter, Spencer uh, uh, Spencer Rattler, um, maybe Spencer Sanders. Um, you have um, Derek King. You have uh, JT Daniels. You have so many quarterbacks coming out next year. Phil Jakovic, maybe. You have so many quarterbacks coming out next year that I think that is a better class to take one. Sam Howe, I even forgot him. Um, and then obviously you still have breakout candidates uh, like a Joe Burrow s type of guy that breaks out, uh, Mac Jones, the guy that breaks out in that uh, final year, his senior year, um, and really becomes a star. And I think that you're still waiting for that because that season hasn't happened. But I think that that's important to look at. So other players that were available at the Kalanon pick, uh, Deterri- 
Darius, R. Darius, Washington safety out of TCU. Milton Williams, defensive end slash defensive tackle out of Louisiana Tech. Uh, James Wiggins, safety out of Cincinnati. And Devont, Deontay Smith, offensive tackle out of Eastern Car- or East Carolina. The uh, only other player that I considered here was Milton Williams. But at this point, I really needed a quarterback. And uh, Kellen Mond was not going to be available for my next pick. So I really had to take a quarterback there. With the 164th pick, I picked Derek Barnes, linebacker out of Purdue. Just a fantastic physical specimen. Just really, really, it, like physically, he has that length. He has that coverage ability. He just has what you want in a sixth round. I, I think this is a sixth round. Maybe it's a fifth round pick. Um, and I just, it, you, you shoot in the dark here. You might as well take the guy with the athletic ability to compete at the NFL level, and that's what I really like about Derek Barnes. He didn't really show that much at Purdue, but to be completely honest, most people didn't shoot, show much at Purdue. Not bashing on Purdue here, but still. Uh, other players that were available was Cole Van Lane, offensive tackle out of Wisconsin. Damar Hamiline, uh, safety out of Pitt. Quentin Morris, tight end out of Bowling Green. None of those other players really made me like blink an eye and say, ooh, I kind of want them, and it's fa- kind of 50-50. Maybe Damar Hamline, uh, pit, the pit safety, but still, I think that the Bears could really use another linebacker in their depth uh, to maybe replace a guy like Danny Terrathan. I don't know whether Derek Barnes can do that, but the skill set he has really surprised me and intrigues me. With the hundred or the two hundred and eighth pick, or I'm sorry, two hundred and fourth pick I had, I picked Tamari and Terry, wide receiver out of Florida State. This guy is a physical beast. He is just great. When I watched him against Notre Dame, I'm like, wow, wait, who is that guy? Why do they man, why do they keep saying his name? He's so good. Um, he's a physical beast. He's gonna be in the sixth round. And I just don't know how you couldn't take a guy there in the sixth round that just is a physical beast on the football field and has a lot of traits, a lot like Allen Robinson. I'm not saying he'll be Allen Robinson, but I think it is important to look and say, hey, Tamari and Terry is going to be a good player. Uh, So at uh, pick number 208, I picked uh, Jordan Scott, defensive tackle out of Oregon. Uh, Just, you kind of needed a defensive tackle here. The only other defensive tackle on the board that I kind of debated was uh, BYU's Chris Tonga. Um, And I'm like, I like Jordan Scott a little bit better because he played better competition. He looked better on tape for me personally. Um, So I really like Jordan Scott a little bit more. Um, and I think he'll fit in just kind of as a depth rotational piece. And in the sixth round, that's what you want, a.k.a. Bilal Nichols. Um, I think Bilal Nichols was a fifth-round pick, but you get my point. Um, at pick number tw- 221, uh, I picked Patrick uh, Johnson, defensive end out of Tulane. Uh, to be completely honest, I haven't watched him at all, but I've heard a lot about him. I've watched his highlights, which I don't really consider watching. He looks like a great player. I think he's a fourth-year senior, maybe a fifth-year senior uh, out of Tulane. And last year, did us well to pick um, Darnell Mooney. So I'm fine with picking another guy out of Tulane. And uh, he just has that kind of skill set and that ability. And I really like that in my mock drafts is that skill set and ability uh, just um, – to have the length, to have the coverage ability, to have the physical capabilities is really important to me um, at most positions um, other than like quarterback um, or uh, even offensive tackle like Liam Eikenberg I think is a good choice because um, he's a, he has a high floor, not a very high ceiling, but an offensive tackle, a high floor is just as good as a high ceiling because that means you're going to get average play to above average play, and that's kind of what you want in an offensive tackle. Um, other players that were available was Shamar Jean uh, Charles, uh, cornerback out of App State, uh, Isaiah McDuffie, linebacker out of Boston College, Jack Anderson, offensive guard out of Texas Tech. And with my final pick in this year's draft, um, I picked my third wide receiver. Uh, sorry if you guys don't like all these wide receivers, but the Bears really need wide receiver depth. Uh, uh, I picked Cornell Powell, wide receiver out of Clemson. Just a tough worker, just a really good worker. And, and that, at this point in the NFL draft, that's kind of what you want. 
Um, so that's all for today's video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the, two, uh, hit the two videos down below. Hit the subscribe button up here. As always, have a great day. Bye.